Hey guys, today we are in the DM Coating Systems warehouse. And what that is, this is a long building. You can see both ways. It's about 900 feet long, this building is, that I'm standing in. And everything comes into this building to be finished. We have a county road that divides the, the factory here. And so everything is welded on one side, comes to this side of the county road on a shuttle. And that's where all the magic happens as far as getting it clean, getting it prepped, getting it DM coated, powder coated, and then of course axles, wiring, stickers, all of that good stuff is done in this building on a driven conveyor. If you haven't seen that video, YouTube or Google, for the lack of better words, search for the DM coating system video on YouTube and it kind of gives you a run through of that whole process from start to finish. So the point of today's video, we've had some question over two different things we want to hit. One is disc brake maintenance and the other one is hub oil maintenance. So this is about after the sale maintenance. So first what we're gonna look at is disc brake maintenance. So disc brakes, you know, in trailers, disc brakes, you know, have been around for quite a while. That's no secret. They are le not as common, you know, over the, oh, it's same as auto, right? Uh, it took time for disc brakes slowly over years and years and years and years to evolve to be, I mean, it's standard equipment on the majority of your uh, late model automobiles, trucks, uh, use disc brakes. They're safer, they provide better stopping power, they're uh, better ongoing maintenance or lesser ongoing maintenance cost. Same story here. You pay slightly more up front, but you have better stopping power and you also have uh, lesser maintenance cost as you go. Like instead of, instead of like on drum brakes, you know, replacing complete backing plate assemblies and shoes and all of that stuff, uh, if you're one who uses your trailer pretty heavily, disc brakes are a really good option for you. Like I said, it's a little bit of an investment up front, but the great thing is this, uh, like on this setup, this is a 7K, it's a torsion, it is a, a disc brake, it's got the D-Max brakes, Lippert Axle uses D-Max brakes, one of the only, uh, well, one of the preferred vendors of disc brakes for US military. So very high spec uh, on these brakes, but same as your car, this is a pad, this is the caliper, this is the rotor. So the pad on both sides, you can see kind of in there, there's a pad on both sides of this rotor. And as you hit your brake, it sends pressure to a, or it sends signal to a pump that then sends pressure to squeeze, the caliper will squeeze the pads down onto the rotor, slowing you down. So obviously you want to make sure that you maintain these pads, just like in your car. And whether you use your trailer you know, and you're running it only, shoot, a, you know, I don't know, a thousand miles a year. You know, you'll probably be more of like an annual maintenance that you're gonna take it in, you wanna get it checked out, you know, make sure everything's gone over, or you're pulling the wheels and tires off yourself and you're inspecting those pads. How much life do I have left? If you're packing on the miles, if you're a hot shotter or, or equi equipment, uh, construction, those things, you're gonna need to check those at higher intervals. It's no, it's not rocket science, right? You know, you wanna, if you wanna maintain your equipment, you have to check it often to make sure that you're, you're staying up on those pads and you keep them replaced. Because what happens is you wear down the brake pad in there and it starts squeezing metal to metal on that uh, rotor. It will start eating the rotor up. Of course, it costs more because you have to replace that rotor. Sometimes if you catch it soon enough and it's gotten into it, you can have the rotors turned. But ideally, you wanna stay ahead of those pads and make sure that you're not eating them, eating them alive you know, you want to make sure that as they wear, you're getting them replaced, uh, replaced when they should be to stay ahead of your maintenance cost. Because if you don't, I mean, it's going to cost you more and you might as well have went with something else, you know, a drum brake option. So it's kind of keeping up with it. But again, disc brakes, solid options, solid buy. More and more uh, trailers and industries, Marine uses a lot of disc brakes, but more and more trailers are headed that way. Uh, we are making a, a push. There's no doubt. We like the security we like uh, of stopping, you know, better with disc brakes. And I mean, it's just the way of the future for trailers. So on this, so the next topic was, sorry, was oil, you know, maintaining your hub oil. This one in particular on 7Ks, we use the Valkram aluminum oil cap, but it stays grease on the 7K. So this is a grease packed hub, has the Valkram aluminum oil cap. When you get into 8Ks and up, We'll walk over here and look. You get in, this is a 12K axle. You get into this, 
we do switch over to oil. Same thing, I was showing you on the, the disc brake, this is a very similar setup, just obviously more robust. You got pads in there, same thing on the big trailers. You wanna make sure you're maintaining your pad thickness and, and wear, that way you can you know, stay on top of keeping your pads replaced. But switching over to talking about the hub oil. So you can see, let's see, right there, that green kind of line, that's hub oil. On Valkram's caps, they have these lines around that are showing you fill levels. So what's commonly, a common misconception is, is that you want to, say if you pull this plug out, that, well, if you, <laughs> if you did, of course the hole is about right there. Common misconception is, is that you want your oil filled up all the way to the bottom of that oil, the, the bottom of the hole. The more oil's gotta be better. That's, that's not correct. If you look at this real close again, that oil level is on this line and no more. When you're talking about that hub spinning at, at, I don't know, tons of RPMs obviously going down the road, it's throwing that oil and it's doing what it's supposed to, to to move in and out and lubricate the bearings inside this hub. So you don't want to overfill it. If you overfill it, you're going to think something's wrong because it's going to start spitting oil out this breather cap. That, that inside of that hub heats up and as it heats up, that oil, it wants to start expanding the air and then it's gonna start pushing oil out that breather cap and you're gonna be thinking something's wrong because you got oil all over the wheel when really there's nothing wrong, it's just overfilled a little bit. So definitely same case as your brakes on hub oil, you wanna maintain hub oil, you know, it's good measure. You can't, you can't keep it changed enough. I mean, some guys, some old Farmer Joes, I mean, they'll run them forever and never touch the hub oil and they get by with it. But, you know, guys running hot shot, you want to make sure, you know, every, I don't know, every few inspections, every half a dozen inspections, you know, that you're doing, you, I mean, it takes not very long. There's a drain, drain, uh, drain port here. You let the oil out, uh, you take the cap out, you refill it back up with fresh oil, spin the hub around, and then hit the road again. Fresh oil is the key to bearings and stuff staying alive. They, they get contaminated over time it eats bearings, eats them up. And so that's when you start having issues. So you wanna make sure you maintain your hub wool. That's one of the main questions. On the grease, it, those have zerks in them. We just showed you that one a while ago. Those are gonna have zerks to where it's a, a grease pump. There's this whole battle, especially in the hotshot world, back and forth, grease or not. You know, these guys, Lippert, as well as Dexter, and th they've spent millions of dollars over the years and for some reason, with some pretty smart engineers and individuals, keeping, spent millions of dollars uh, engineering and have kept 8Ks and up oil for a reason. And so in most cases, 99.9%, .9%, if, if you keep these maintained like you should, then it shouldn't be a problem, you, uh, as, I mean, long term. A lot of guys like to go with grease because once they change it, it's not as thin. And it's, if you did have a seal, start to go bad or something, it's not as apt to show up because the grease is thicker and it's not slinging it as much. And so, but from a long-term maintenance perspective, you know, we trust the guys at Lippert and at Dexter for that matter. And we trust them that oil is the best way for, for 8Ks and up. So anyways, that's the way it's gonna come. Some guys switch them over and that's their, their prerogative and they have their reason. So, but no big, no big deal on that though. So anyways, well, I appreciate you taking some time with me today. Make sure you know to subscribe, like this video, follow us on all the other major social channels in the comments. If there's something that you're not seeing from us, any other ideas, any other options uh, that you want us to go over or processes throughout the plant, let us know, comment it. We keep up with it, we read the comments, we reply the majority of the time, we reply and we take that stuff to heart. So shoot it our way. Last thing, jump on diamondc.com, get on the learning center. If you haven't been there, it is a wealth of knowledge. Tons and tons of options and features, things about Diamond C's culture. Like it's a really cool resource. If you're a trailer nerd like me, it's a really cool resource to learn more about Diamond C, what we do, why we do it, and how we do it. We'll see you on the road.